Good afternoon. This is July the 26th, Sunday. I hope this message finds everyone doing well. We have concluded our worship service at the East Main Church of Christ for the day. I hope you'll allow me a few minutes of your time. I want to talk about a couple of things. I had announcements this morning at East Main, and usually when, when we do our announcements, we'll say, when you came in this morning, you should have picked up an order of worship. Of course, if you're worshiping remotely with us, you don't have that opportunity. Um, so let me review the back of the worship guide for today. Pete Barber continues on home hospice. Terry Kingsley is home recuperating from neck surgery. Linda Hand is home now following therapy from hip surgery. Crafton Laney underwent retina surgery on his right eye. Natalie Mansell will undergo surgery soon in Birmingham to correct some TMJ issues with her jaw. A good friend of Eddie Simmons, Thomas Lloyd, has been diagnosed with spasmodic dysphonia and requests our prayers. Our sympathy is extended to Hannon Ray in the loss of his cousin, Jan Jacobs, on July the 22nd. Starr's sister-in-law, Melissa Pittman, is in North Mississippi Medical Center with complications from coronavirus, and her mother is having trouble with her hand. So Star will be taking her this afternoon to try to get some help for that. Also, Ann Letiri, this is Sandra Simmons' sister, passed away yesterday, and arrangements are incomplete at the time for that. So last week, um, Barry's lesson was built around a traffic signal. A uh, very good lesson, had some good points. Um, and I don't know if some of you have noticed that some of the traffic signals in Tupelo have been changed. Now, if you're in the left turn lane, you may have a green arrow, a green flashing arrow, a yellow flashing arrow, a solid green light. Um, and, and I noticed this, and I thought, wait a minute, how do you change traffic lights without telling everybody? And, and, and maybe everybody knew this was coming, but, but I didn't. Um, but you know, you'd think that that would be one of those things that if they're going to change the way a traffic light operates, that they would publicize that pretty well. Another thing I want to mention is sometimes after the invitation song, you will notice that we will end our live stream. And the reason we do this is because someone has, has come forward. Um, and really we're kind of unsure how we should be handling that. So we've just been ending the live stream um, for a few moments and then restarting it. Uh, so if you're noticing an interruption, just know that, that that's what's happening. Um, there will be another stream started just real shortly, and it will pick up with the, with the Lord's Supper um, and the continuance of the service. So as, as we mentioned the live streaming, um, a couple of weeks ago, Dennis and his elders' encouragement mentioned that that we have a audio-visual project going um, with cameras and sound, trying to become um, trying to become more modern in, in, in our our live streaming and broadcasting and so forth. Uh, we're still in progress on that. Our contractor is actually having trouble um, securing some of the components. Um, as you can well imagine, there are several there are several different um, churches and so forth. Uh, trying to get this type thing going, um, so some of the some of the materials are, are hard to get. I'd like just for a few moments now to to look at a passage in Second Corinthians. This is Second Corinthians chapter eight, verses one through four. Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing, imploring us with much urgency that we should receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. So Paul here is, is addressing um, the giving of the contribution. Uh, there was a group there that had given to his, to his ministry in a tremendous way. He tells us there in verse 1 that it was some of the churches in Macedonia. Um, what's amazing about this is not um, what they gave. Paul indicates here that they were 
willing to go beyond their means in that giving. In verse 6, he indicates um, that they are urging Titus to take that contribution even when they didn't have it to give. What we really want to look at is is verse 2. And in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. Now, we really don't know um, what that great affliction was. Uh, Some would say that that it was Jews persecuting the church. Some would say that it was Romans persecuting the church. So while we don't know the specifics, we do know that Paul says this was a great trial of affliction. In this great trial of affliction, their joy abounded in their riches and all liberality. They didn't allow this great affliction to keep them down. They allowed this great affliction, rather, to motivate them to do more. Now, I don't don't know about you, but my my first reaction when something bad happens is, is, oh, poor me. Why does this always happen to happen to me? Um, You know, I'm quick to have a little pity party. Uh, But Paul is saying here that the churches in Macedonia didn't allow this great affliction to get them down. And they actually used it as a motivation to go above and beyond their usual means of help. When they were afflicted, they didn't quit. They increased their efforts. So I, I want to encourage you. You know, we're, we're living our lives right now in, in unfamiliar circumstances. Uh, we're making decisions um, and doing things not based on past experiences, but on educated guesses and hopes. We've seen our country kind of relax a little bit over the past month um, and and open up a little bit more. And as a result, we've seen a spike in in the corona cases. And and I'll tell you, there's there's so much information out there. There's so much misinformation out there. You can find about anything you want to read um, out there somewhere. Uh, and it, it's really hard to tell the truth from propaganda. Um, it, it's, it's discouraging, you know. That there's there's so much concern now about about the coronavirus. There is social unrest in our country. There are still protests going on in different cities. There there are so many distractions that can keep us from keeping our eye on God and seeking first the kingdom. Schools are getting ready to start back in a couple of weeks. Uh, Parents, students, and teachers, and and all the administrators are are very concerned about this, as as rightfully so. Um, There's so much right now weighing so heavily on a lot of people's minds. But look, don't let this get you down. Don't use this as an opportunity, or use this as an opportunity to thrive and excel. With these afflictions come great opportunities. Don't give less. Don't do less. Give more. Do more. Write those cards. Make those calls. Encourage those that you know need encouragement. Don't let this downtime be downtime. Utilize it wisely. Use it to glorify God. I promise God is going to use this for his own good. If we continue to walk in the light, continue to have faith, and let that faith grow. Let others see that you aren't going to let these afflictions get you down. Whether or not you think the devil is behind this or whether or not you think the devil is using this, don't allow him to discourage you. Don't allow the devil to use you to discourage someone else. Don't repay evil for evil. Look, abound in your joy. Abound in your giving. Abound in your faith. Keep seeking first the kingdom. I'd like to thank you for your time today. I hope that you have um, been blessed by this, and I hope that you have a great week. Thank you.